Hi and welcome back. So I've had my first blood test here in the Philippines, September 2023. I'll compare this test to all the previous ones. Let's get into it. Let's quickly cover the supplements I was taking when I had this blood test taken. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams a day. Trans resveratrol, 1 gram a day. That's on the non-training days. That's difficult now because I'm training, whether it's a run and a walk or weight training in the gym, more or less five days a week. So I take it Monday, Wednesday and Friday, sometimes on a Saturday. TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams a day. 500 milligrams of metformin per day. And I take that at night before I go to, uh, before I go to bed. Uh, vitamin D3, 5,000 international units and then 10,000 international units per day on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms of the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams of the L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams of the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day, and that's on the first, second, and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second, and third of each month. That's a, a, a big hit dose as opposed to the daily maintenance dose. If you want to know the reasons why, there is a link in the description of my supplement list uh, in the YouTube channel. Dried parsley, one tablespoon per day mixed into my yogurt. Cert 6 activator, 800 milligrams per day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day. And now Glynac or Glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams per day. So that's the supplements done. I'm guessing the instant gratification freaks have already jumped ahead. Um, they're going to be confused when I go through the results and they realize it's not 100% complete. So the UAE, which is where I came from um, prior to doing these tests in the Philippines, is a first world country. The Philippines is not. And the largest provincial hospital I have access to can't complete all the tests. That's all the tests I'm used to having done in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. That said, what they did test, they got the results back to me within six hours, which I thought was, was fantastic. Uh, although for some reason, vitamin D3 and B12 is going to take between 12 and 14 days. So in this video, I will just cover what I could test. Now, this weekend, uh, as a family, we are heading off by ferry to the large island, which is next to us, which is a very um, much larger hospital. And I'm guessing they have they offer more comprehensive blood tests. So we're going to go and check there. Um, so I will do an update when I get those results back. And if that hospital can do all the results or can do all the tests that I want doing, it looks like there's probably going to be a three monthly road and ferry trip for my family to get my blood drawn. So enough offering of me. Let's jump into the results. So let's take a look at my lipid profile. You can see here my total cholesterol is still high, lower than last time. Uh, my HDL is within range as normal. My LDL is high uh, and you may know that I'm not really bothered about that, although it is lower than it was um, last time. Uh, and I'll play a video in just a second showing that people with high LDL actually had a lower risk of death. Okay, another study just came out looking at the relationship between high cholesterol and mortality, cardiovascular mortality, total mortality. Uh, it is entitled the association between hypercholesterolemia and mortality risk among patients referred for cardiac imaging test, evidence of a quote unquote cholesterol paradox. And so what they did, uh, this study was, was published uh, in the Journal of Pro Pro uh, Progressive Cardiovascular Disease. Uh, main author, Alan Rosansky, primary or senior author, Daniel Berman. And so what they did is they looked at four different groups, 65,000 or so people that were referred to for cardiac imaging. That meant there was something going on in their clinical history that made the, the, the clinician concerned about cardiovascular disease. And so they underwent either coronary artery calcium scanning, which some of you guys are familiar with, especially a CT scan of the coronary vessels looking for calcified plaque. They underwent a uh, the other test was a CT angiography or a CT, CCTA. Uh, so there, in the first group, there were 10,000 people. The CCTA group had 31,000 patients. Uh, we had an additional group that underwent something called a SPEC scanning or nuclear SPEC scanning, which is single positron emission uh, computerized tomography, some with uh, known cardi cardi cardiovascular disease and others without known cardiovascular disease. So these four groups came out and they looked at the different various factors and what predicted mortality. And the group that had the highest mortality, the ones undergoing spec scanning, so the nuclear imaging study that also had significant known 
coronary artery disease. These people died at a rate of about 3,000 over the follow-up period, which uh, was, how long was that? Doesn't list that immediately. But anyway, over that period of time, 3% of the population died. Then I went spec scanning, the coronary artery calcium scan, less than 1%, it was like 0.31% or something like that. So regardless of how many people died in which group, what was what, what the take home message here is that people that had diabetes were more likely to die. It was about, uh, I think it was about an 88% increase in mortality. People that had um, a smoking history had an increase by about 67%. And people with elevated blood pressure had about a 30, 38% increase in mortality rates, okay? So these things all were positively associated with death. Now, when we looked at high LDL cholesterol, what they saw was the opposite effect. In, the, in these particular patients, people with high cholesterol fared better. People with high cholesterol had a lower rate of death, about a 30% or a 29% decrease in the rate of mortality. So again, this is the quote unquote cholesterol paradox. Uh, some of the, uh, I guess, the, the classic cholesterol is evil, root of all evil type of thing, folks would say that this is, again, reverse causation, and then the people that are sicker have lower cholesterol because cholesterol stops, our body stops producing it. But again, these relationships continue to occur. There continues to be this quote-unquote paradox. Uh, but what we're not seeing is the diabetes paradox, the smoking paradox, the hypertension paradox, which is kind of interesting. We, we see those relationships remain consistently throughout you know, all-cause mortality studies, cardiovascular studies. These things consistently show bad results, whereas in groups like this, you know, cholesterol is sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So it's interesting. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, does it change how you would you would approach your your uh, uh, you know your approach towards longevity and disease mitigation, things like that? It's interesting. Interesting to talk about. More and more of this stuff is coming out. There is a greater and greater. You know, when we talk about consensus in science, you know, we saw, for any guys who have been paying attention for the last couple of years, we see how consensus is often um, garnered is through force and coercion and, you know, kind of, kind of sometimes it's uh, suppression of the dissenting voices. And we've seen that certainly with uh, recent events, but I think also within, within the realm of, of, of medicine. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of... Uh, disingenuous uh, people. There's a lot of science that's been paid for. There's just a lot of scientists that have been influenced. I'm not saying all of them, but that does occur. All right, guys, let me know what you think. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. My triglycerides are still high, which is concerning. Now, you'll see they were high the month before. They were high in May. And if you remember, if you watched that video I talked about, that was my last um, week in the UAE. You haven't spent about 19, 20 years there. So there was lots of farewell dinners and drinks. Uh, and the hospital moved my blood test closer than what it should have been. Um, and I think that I still had quite a few. Um, before it happened here, you can see in February, that was because a friend of mine had come from Iraq, uh, transiting through the UAE, me and him, or he and I had quite a few beers. Uh, and that is why I think pushed it up. And then when I had that test taken again, like a week later, you can see it dropped back down. This one here, again, um, that was where... I'd had a fair, quite a few in that one last week, quite a few farewell dinners, drunk quite a lot of beer, uh, and then the, the hospital pushed my blood test forward, which I think is what it caused it there. This one here, which shouldn't be high, um, I planned to take the blood test on the day, uh, the day I planned to take it, which was the, the 5th of September, and then a few days before that, my wife's auntie turned up, unknown to anyone, she'd flown all the way from America. Um, there was a, a, a party, I think it was the night before, maybe the day, the night before, the night before of the blood test, uh, a big party where <clears throat> obviously more beer was drunk. So I've got a funny feeling that that is the reason it's also high. What I will do when I head off next weekend to the Big Island to get checked, what I couldn't get checked this time, I'll probably get them to do a full lipid panel. If not, definitely do triglycerides to see if that number comes down because I, I won't be drinking um, the week before like I normally do for that. My uh, VLDL cholesterol is within range, that's no problem. My um, total cholesterol and HDL is in the red, that's because my LDL and the total cholesterol are high. Um, that's it for my lipid profile. Moving on, let's take a look at my blood sugar levels. You can see 
the last test, it was 5.5. Remember, that's when I was on 1,000 milligrams a day. Um, I dropped back down to 500 because I also went under OMAD for one, sorry, two, and then three days per week, and I wasn't sure if this had affected it. You can see here it's gone back up to 6.1, which when I had those kind of numbers in the Middle East, they would class that on the report as high. For some reason, you're in the Philippines, they're saying that anything below 6.5 is acceptable and is their reference range i will record this but i'm not going to use that i'm going to class that as 6.1 as being high and um, in the increased risk category for diabetes um, you can also see average blood glucose is zero that's because that's one of the tests that they could not do here on the island where i live when i go next week to the big island um, that's a test i want them to do i'll probably get them to do the full um, both blood sugar um, tests. I started taking this morning, actually, which is the Sunday that this video is going to be posted, a uh, thousand milligrams a day. So it'll be interesting to see if that has any effect over a week. I'm, I'm doubting it will, but it'd be good to see. So the 500 milligrams I take with all my supplements in the morning, and then the second 500 I take just before I go to bed when I take my uh, my second or my third dose of DIM. Moving on, let's take a look at my liver profile. You can see here. Everything that could be tested was tested and it is all within reference range. So I'm quite happy with that. Moving on to my renal profile. You can see here that my calcium is now 7.1, which would normally be lower. But the reference range here, because they use a different measurement, is between 9.2 and 11. So that's within reference range. Unfortunately, they couldn't test uric acid and blood urea nitrogen. Um, I remember I had a bit of issue with my uric acid because of I think it was the fish I was eating so that that those are definitely two that I will get tested when I try and get tested again next week and obviously the the bun um, creatinine ratio they couldn't test that either so that's something I want to get tested now remember my creatinine was probably the reason that my biological age was affected so badly because it had gone from um, 1.7 or 1.1 up to 1.64 uh, and remember when I did the biological age test, I then did the same test again, but added this number and it reduced it back down to seven years younger. You can see here, because I stopped taking cre uh, creatine and also I've cut down the amount of red meat that I'm eating, which is high in uh, creatine, you can see that my level has now gone to 0 0.83. So it'll be interesting to see when I do my biological age test, if this has any effect um, on my biological age. Sodium, you can see here, 133.8 is low, and that's the first time um, ever it's been low. So I'm going to need to find out what causes that in particular, because I think that might be something to do with the change in diet, moving from the Middle East here to the Philippines. And that's something that I will definitely have to look at and try and address if I can. So moving on to my thyroid uh, results, you can see here, all within reference range. So happy with that. Vitamin D3. They've tested, but I haven't got the results back, so they'll be added once I get the results. Same with vitamin B12. They did the test, but I haven't got the results back just yet. Testosterone, they couldn't test, so that's something I'm going to get tested, hopefully, on the big island. Iron, again, something that they couldn't test here, so again, that's something that's going to get tested next week, hopefully, on the big island. And again, homocysteine, something they couldn't test here, something I'm hoping to get done next week. Moving on to homocysteine, you can see here they weren't able to do that test. So every time I say they weren't able to do it, assume this is one thing I'm going to try and get on the Big Island next me next week. C-reactive protein, you can see they did test that. Their reference range, for some reason, is just anything less than 10 is okay. I got less than 5, which is obviously okay. But for the online blood test uh, for my biological age, it needs to be entered in milligrams per litre. So... I'm hoping I'm going to get this done again on the Big Island. I'm hoping they can give me the score in milligrams uh, per litre. My lipoprotein A, they weren't able to do. My apolipoproteins, which I do want because that's to do with cardiac issues. I want to make sure that I get that done. My amylase, uh, they couldn't do. And also my lipase, they did do. Their reference range here is from 14 to 280, minus 35. So that's well within the reference range. Let's move on to my EGFR. You can see here it's gone from 45, which was low, 
to 100 and anything over 90 is normal. So that's a, a really good positive jump in regards to uh, kidney function. It does say that anyone between 60 and 90 may not necessarily have kidney disease if there is no other sign of kidney damage, such as protein in the urine. So I'm usually between 60 and 89. But if you go back to my urine scores, you can see here that with regard to protein in it, I've had it once and that was a trace back in February 2021. So it appears nothing to worry about if it's um, mildly low. But this score of 101 is great. That said, the the time before was 45, and that's I think it's the lowest it's ever been, which I thought was a mistake or an outlier. So when I go and get my test again next week, I'll probably get this tested just to see if this 101 is an anomaly and if it drops down back into the into the 80s or 90s. But that would be um, that would be interesting to see. Uh, next is estradiol. They couldn't check my estradiol in this hospital. That's something I definitely want to keep checking. So that's something I really want to look for in the next hospital uh, where I'm going next week. And then cardiac risk. Um, the only one that they did do was my C-reactive protein. These ones here, hopefully I'm gonna get checked because the cardiac risk markers is de definitely something that I wanna keep on top of. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, so those are the results. I think all okay, obviously apart from the cholesterol, but as you know, I don't subscribe to the high LDL causing heart disease theory. Um, I'm glad my EGFR is now well into the normal range. But again, this will be confirmed, as will all the other gaps when I take my next test, hopefully in about a week's time. Let me know what you think about this test in the comments of the YouTube video.